Saints, everybody, listen. This is a whole day of impartation. I'm going to be sliding in and sliding out. the man was saying that he was me and then he said that he was another prophet but he got my picture <laughs> so he confused he many prophets at the same time he got my picture but he said that he's somebody else so he wrote <laughs> he was confused he had my picture, but he said, no, I'm, I'm Prophet Shepherd. Man, bless me, God, brother, which one you is? So hold on, man. You'll be all right. What?
saints listen there's a special anointing today this is this is such a special anointed day this is a day of supernatural impartation those of you all today is heavy day is a special anointing for today special anointing now saints i'm talking to you about something real powerful this is real powerful because I'm dealing with the zones of angels. I'm dealing with the zones of angels. I'm dealing with zones. There's a reason why angels have zones. Because they're not in every place. Angels are not omnipresent. God is omnipresent. Angels are not omnipresent. They're not in every place. So therefore, you can't move with an angel where you want to move with an angel. An angel has a specific zone in which it operates in. A lot of times your life can be slowed down because you're functioning in a place that's not the zone of your angel. So you might be in school trying to get another degree for another four years and your angel, that's not its location. So what will happen is you're in a zone that the angel does not operate in. So that means that only a demon can rule you in the season you're in. Because what happens is, if it's not the will of God, the angel does not have authority to move you in the direction of God's will. If you are not in the will of God, it don't have the authority to protect you. It don't have the authority to guard you from certain things. So unnecessary things can happen to you. Why? Because you're outside of the zone of your angel. The angel operates in the flow of the Holy Spirit, which is spontaneous. Why? Because saints, God has not only have a plan, he, he not only have plans for you, but he's still planning for you. This is what we don't get sometimes. The Lord is not just having plans for you. He's planning for you. So the planning is things that he's doing spontaneously. The planning is the things that he's doing at the spur of the moment. Meaning it's not something that that is just according to grace. It's according, it's according to your righteousness. It's according to your obedience. It's according to your surrender. Now watch this. You can be so excellent before God. That you not only receive his plans, but you receive his planning. Now, saints, I want you to hear me. There are angels in the zone of his planning. Meaning these angels understand the spontaneous God. Where because you touch the hem of his garment, you receive a spontaneous miracle that wasn't scheduled. I want you to see this. Jairus's daughter was in the plan of God. The woman with the issue was in the planning of God. Oh my God, saints, I hope you, I hope you hear me. Now this is going to be some powerful stuff today. Just listen, we locked and loaded. Um, listen, we locked and loaded. Uh, listen, we locked and loaded. In prophetic partakers, I'm going to be there in this evening. Watch this here. The woman, the, 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 the Jairus's daughter was the plan of Jesus. The woman with the issue of blood was the planning of Jesus. The woman, uh, the Jairus's daughter was already planned. The woman with the issue of blood was the planning. Why? Because the planning is the spontaneous side of the Lord. Where things happen to you that's not really scheduled. This is why you must always be open to how God is going to move. Because he may tell you that he's going to do something in two weeks. And within the two weeks, things happen that you didn't expect. Because he's your experience. First, he revealed the plan to you. But the planning is spontaneous. The zones of angels. Now, we in prophetic level chapter, uh, we in prophetic level 14. Prophetic level 14. Now, saints, I want you to understand the number 14. 
is seven twice. So when you deal with the, the, the number 14, is seven twice. It's a double of completion. It's a double of it is finished. It's a double. So saints, when you get to this prophetic level 14, God is looking for you to be double in your excellence. Be double in your obedience. Be double in getting things done. Be double in the way that you accomplish his will. There's a greater level. Remember the Bible said to whom much is given, much is required. In this 14th level is a level of maturity. It's a level of advance. Advancement in the spirit. Now, saints, this prophetic level, I want you to see this. The Lord created the earth in seven days. On the seventh day, he rested. Now, saints, that seventh day was a day of rest. When you enter into the prophetic level 14 is when you begin to rest in the spirit. And this is what you, you got to catch. This is how you begin to hear God more. You hear God more when you begin to rest. Why? Because a lot of times the devil use you use being anxious and being eager and being boisterous. He uses that to keep you actually from hearing God. When you get anxious, when you get hyper, when you get uh, over-exaggerated about things, then you start stepping into a place where you can't really hear God even though he's speaking to you. If you notice a child, if a child is running around, it can't hear you. If a child is running around, you can speak to them, but they don't heed what you say. Because the child is not at rest. Now, when the child gets sleepy and is inside of your lap and you're holding the child and they look like they done fell out, you know what I'm saying? You know, children, you got to wear them out. Like you got, you got to run around the room and scream like 15 times, then they still be going. I'm saying some of y'all get mean, then you trip your child low key and then, listen, that's, that's just your secret. It's just your secret. You ain't got to tell nobody. You know what I'm saying? Bebo Lottie got more head than he got body. You know, you ain't got to tell nobody. You know, we know that man, man, his head not big, big for no reason. We know that you slap man, man. You done, you done knocked him out a couple of times. Man, man, man. Man, man, he going to tell the story when he get a little older. You know what I'm saying? Since nowadays, you can't give a child no no phone. They be trying to give, you, you know, you you give the child a phone, you going to knock them out there and call it 911. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> you in the kitchen up there trying to cook you some chicken and whatnot. You out there just slicing the chicken. Real, real, real. The police at the door. You know, open up the door, you don't know what happened. The child and call 911. You know, knock them in the head, they don't use the cell phone that you gave them last Christmas. <laughs> so it, 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 now watch this here. Now, Saints, when you get to the prophetic level 14. God expect for you to be in a place of double rest. Double rest, why? Because now you're supposed to be so mature that a storm doesn't take you out of your element. That opposition don't take you out of your element. That warfare don't take you out of your element. You're supposed to be so mature that threats don't take you out of your element. That opposition Hatred, jealousy, because watch, you're going to experience hatred and jealousy, maybe even today. You may go and experience people coming against you today. You don't let that take you out your element. You stay in the element of the spirit. It don't matter how much opposition going to come against you today. You stay in your zone. Why? Because when you're in your zone, there's an angel standing right beside you. And the angel is there to bring you victory. The, the angel is there to bring you deliverance. The angel is there to record the injustice. This is why you must stay in the zone. Because the angels work in the strength of their anointing in the zone. 
angels carry the glory of God in that zone. Now, if you leave the zone, demons can take over. And this is what happens so many times. When you leave the spirit and you try to deal with stuff in the natural, you leave the zone. So what begins to happen? Now, the evil spirit has power to be victorious over you in that state. Saints, demons don't got power over you. It don't got power over you. But when you don't stay in the zone of the Holy Spirit, now that demon has authorization to defeat you at that time. Saints, if you take a note, write this down. The period where your the period where you're reckless is the period of your defeat. If you take a note, write it down. The period that you're reckless is the period where you're defeated. Now, saints, what begins to happen? You're in a place where God is asking you, I need you to stay in the spirit despite this happening. Now, it's going to happen to you today. It's not only going to happen to you today, it's going to happen all this week. Now, what happened is Satan already knows that there's an angel in the zone that God is trying to tell you to stay in. Mentally, there's a supernatural angel there to defeat everything that's coming against you. But Satan don't want you to know that. He wants you to operate in the place of, listen, I, I don't like what's happening, so I need to retaliate. Listen, Revenge is a sign of immaturity. If you take a note, write that down. Revenge is a sign of immaturity. Always remember that. When you operate in revenge, you're operating in immaturity. That's why the Bible said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. When you operate in revenge, you're in a, you're in a, 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 a demonic web. Now, Satan is tricking you outside of your inheritance. Why? Because your inheritance is for God to fight him. So as long as you fight him and try to get back at him, then God won't do it. If you don't do it, then God will. If you do it, then God won't. My God. So, so there's a trick. He don't want you to stay in the zone. There's an angelic zone for everyone that's carrying the prophetic anointing. Now this zone is so powerful. Elijah was in, was in this zone. That's why he called down fire from heaven. Moses was in the zone. That's why the glory cloud showed up. Prophet Balaam was in the zone. But Balak and Balak's men took him out of the zone. So that means that the zone can be taken out. I, I want to show you this in scripture. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. People can bring you out of the zone of the prophetic if you're not careful. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Is the little foxes that spoil the vine. That zone where the angel is, where the prophetic anointing is, it can be suffocated if you're not careful. Now see, saints, when Jesus gives you the prophetic, he gives it to you. He doesn't protect it for you. Jesus in parts and you protect the part. Now, saints, I want you to see this. The Bible said in Numbers chapter 22, verse 21, Balak rose up in the morning and saddled his ass. Says I'm in the King James Version. Listen, I ain't, I ain't know I was going to say it like that, but listen. I talk like that anyway. Listen, watch this here. Balaam rose up in the morning, sat on the ass, and went with the princes of Moab. Now watch this here. Verse 21 says, 
verse 21 says that he went with the princes of Moab. Now, saints, I want you to see this in verse 21. These are demons. These are demons. Oh, my God. Saints, this is so powerful. This is so powerful. So he saddled the ass and went with princes of Moab. Now, watch this. When you deal with saddling the ass, it means he went go sit on the ass. Now, watch this. I want you to catch this. He was in the prophetic when he rose up in the morning. Watch this. I want you to see this because morning is a position. Because the Bible said that God created night and day. The day was really representative of God. The night was really representative of satanic activity. Now, I want you to see this. Look at, look at this, saints. The Bible said Balaam rose up in the morning. Now, watch this. Balaam is a prophetic realm. This is what we got to catch. Balaam is a prophetic realm. Why? Because he's a prophet. So when the Bible said Balaam rose up, meaning that the prophet rose up, the prophetic anointing rose up, the prophetic realm rose up in the morning. Now watch this, saints. I want you to see this. In verse 21, there are three realms to this. When he rose up in the morning, the Bible said joy cometh in the morning. Morning represents a time of joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So watch this. When he rose up in the morning, it represented a place of the anointing. It represented a place of strength. Watch this. And then he saddles the ass. No, watch this here. The ass represent the foolish side. So watch, he rises up in the anointing. He steps into the foolish side and now he's being drawn away by the princes of Moab. I hope you stay with me, saints. This is some powerful stuff. I'm giving you deep revelation here, saints. You, you ain't gonna find this nowhere. Watch this. Balaam rose up in the morning. So he rose up, joy cometh in the morning. Nehemiah 8, 10 said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Philippians chapter four, verse 13 say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when they say he rose up in the morning, mean he rose up. And why did it say Balaam? Because Balaam represent the prophet, the prophetic anointing. So the prophetic anointing rose up with strength. Why I say in the morning, the morning is a prophetic atmosphere, is a is an atmosphere where God is 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 fresh. That's why I said his mercies are new every morning. It's fresh every morning. It's a fresh anointing. Now watch this. So he raises, he rises up with a fresh anointing, uh, a fresh prophetic anointing. Then he steps, then he saddles the ass. So he steps into foolishness and he went with the princes of Moab. Now he's moving into demonic. Oh my God. Saints, I want you to see this. This is what happens to so many people. You wake up in the prophetic. You linger into foolishness. Then you being drawn away by demons. And then watch this. Verse 22 is what happens to you, but you don't really be realizing it. Watch this. Numbers chapter 22, verse 22 says. And God's anger was kindled because he went. Wow. So watch, God is angry at him now. Wow. Wow. Watch this. Verse 21 and verse 22 is so crucial because in verse 21, at the beginning, God is joyful because watch, Balaam rises up in the morning. He rises up, joy cometh in the morning. So he rises up in a realm where he has joy, where he has the strength of the prophetic anointing. He's in the morning. God is joyful. Then watch, his decision is to step, step into foolishness. Then his decision is to go away with demons. The princes of Moab represent the demonic reign. Watch what it says in verse 22. And God's anger was kindled because he went. Says this is so powerful. 
This is so powerful. This is so powerful. So saints, he goes from a place of strength and the anointing to foolishness to demonic direction. Wow. Saints, I'm giving you a revelation in this Numbers chapter 22, verse 21 and verse 22. Now watch this. Remember, I talked about angels and zones. Remember, I just was teaching you about angelic zones. I want you to see this. Watch this. The Bible said, and God's anger was kindled because he went and the angel of the Lord stood in the way as an adversary against him. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. Your angel can turn on you. Ooh. 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 This another realm of teaching. 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 This is another realm of teaching. Saint share this broadcast. Part oh my God. Oh my God.
Now watch this here, this survival. <laughs> Feel the anointed. Now watch this, saints. So Balaam rose up in the morning. He saddled the ass, the donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. Now verse 21 is so amazing. You know why? Because it reveals three stages of this prophet. <clears throat> Now he's prophetic in the morning. He's foolish afterwards. He's deceived next. I want you to see this. These are three places that just hit. He, he enters up into the morning, into the realm of God, because morning represents God. That's why I said joy cometh in the morning. And then Psalm 16, verse 11, say that in the presence of God is fullness of joy. Now, so this is the fullness of God's presence that he's entering into, he rises up into. Now watch this. It said that he rose up. This is the same thing Jesus did. The Bible said he rose on the third day. So saints, I want you to catch this. When the Bible said that he rose up in the morning, he was doing the same thing Jesus did 
when Jesus rose from the dead, meaning stepping into power, stepping into the realm of God. Jesus did not rise from the dead because it was something that was prayed for. It was supernatural. Now watch what he does. He rises up in the morning. He rose up in the morning. He does a similar occurrence. Why? Because this is the glory of God. This is the glory realm. Then he saddles the ass, the donkey. He steps into foolishness. So watch this. He rises up in the glory and forgets the glory. He rises up in the prophetic and forgets the prophetic. He rises up in the presence of God and forgets the presence of God. He becomes foolish. Now he's in the zone of not angels, but demons. I want you to see the saints. Balaam steps into the zone of demons. The Bible said he went with the princes of Moab. How could he go with the princes of Moab? Because now he's in the demonic. For you to enter into the demonic, you must be deceived. So he's deceived. He does not even see that what he's doing is wrong. God did not just get angry at him because, listen, he said, no, God was angry at him because God was like, wow, you rose up in me. You drifted away from me. And now you're all the way in the demonic. Now demons have power over him. Saints, look at what verse 21 said. With the princes of Moab. These are the principalities. I want you to see this. The princes of Moab is principalities. So when Ephesians chapter 6 say principalities and powers and rulers of the dark saints. He falls, to the, he falls into the hands of principalities because he does not stay in the angelic zone. Where God planted him. Now watch this saints. Before Balaam ever went to a place, he was mentally there. So he stepped into foolishness mentally. He stepped into the principalities of Moab mentally. Then it manifested in his decisions. But it was inward. He rose up in the morning. He rose up in the presence of God. He, be, he, he chooses to be foolish mentally. He steps with the principalities, the princes of Moab, mentally. And he's still a prophet. This is what can happen to you if you don't stay in the spirit. You can be in bondage to things that you're a prophet over. He's a prophet over the princes of Moab. He has authority over the princes of Moab. But now they're taking him captive. All because he's operating as an ass. Foolishness. Saints, foolishness is the enemy of your anointing. If you're taking notes, write that down. Foolishness. Is knowledge blinded. If you're taking notes, write that down. Foolishness. Is knowledge blinded? If you take a note, write that down. Foolishness is knowledge blinded. What happens is Balaam has knowledge, but when he saddled the ass, this meaning the donkey, it meant that he stepped into a realm of foolishness. So what happened was. He has knowledge, but he's operating as if he don't. He has authority, but he's functioning as a slave. The, one of the worst things that, you can, that can happen to you is that you can have a master grace, but a slave mentality. You can have a master anointed. A dominion anointed, but have a slave 
mentality. He has dominion over the princes of Moab, but because he's operating in the realm of foolishness, now the princes of Moab have dominion over him. Now watch verse 22. It said, and God's anger was kindled against him. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way as an adversary against him. Your angels can turn on you. When you don't obey God, when you don't value the Holy Spirit, when you don't uh, believe the prophet that God sent to you, when you don't stay consistent with the Holy Spirit, your angel can turn against you. There are some believers whose angel turns against them. Why? Because now they're in a place where God is fighting them because they know better and they refuse to do better. There are people that have a prophetic knowledge, but not a prophetic decision. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Saints, I hope you hear me. I said there are people that have a prophetic knowledge, but they don't have prophetic decisions. They have a Jesus knowledge, but they don't have Jesus decisions. They have a Holy Spirit knowledge, but they don't have Holy Spirit decisions. They have a word of God knowledge, but not a word of God decisions. They have the knowledge of Jesus, but they don't have the fruit of Jesus. I want you to see this, saints. The Bible said in verse 22, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way as an adversary against him. I want you to see this. He chooses to go with Satan. Now he has prophetic knowledge, but he chooses to be an ass, a foolish person. He, when the Bible says he sat on the ass, it mean, it mean, it mean he stepped into the foolish realm, spiritually speaking. And he goes with the princes of Moab. So he's going with principalities. Saints, I want you to see this. How could I say this? This is so powerful. I want you to see this. Saints, this is him as a prophet. These are the demons. He steps into foolishness. And now, He's being led into captivity by demonic powers, even though he has prophetic knowledge, even though he has prophetic understanding, even though he has prophetic insight. He's being led astray by demons now. Now, watch this. As a result of him giving place to the devil, now even his angel is fighting him. Saints, you got to catch this. He chooses to be lazy. He chooses to be crazy. He chooses to go in a way that God doesn't want him to go. Now he's not just going with principalities. But now his angel is fighting against him as well. Now, saints, you, you got to understand the scripture. The angel, not the demon, is fighting him. The angel turns on him because the angel is saying, you know better. This is where you get the scripture to whom much is given, much is required. See, saints, remember I, I was teaching you in prophetic partakers. Angels know your level. They know your knowledge, so they don't play around with you. They know when you've been exposed to truth and you know better and you make the they they, they one with God. Like they don't they don't they don't patty cake you and play around with you. They know when you have been exposed to a level in God where your decisions can be excellent, it can be perfect, it can be stern, it can be 
disciplined. It can be righteous. It can be wise. It can be loyal to the spirit of God. It can be focused on Jesus. It can be perfected in obedience. Now watch this. Verse 23 says, verse 22 says, the angel stood as an adversary against him, as an enemy against him. So saints, Balaam is, a, is in a season where now, not only is the devil fighting him, but his own angel is fighting him. Wow. Look what the Bible said. In verse 22, now he is riding upon his ass and took two servants with him. I want you to see this. Balaam is stepping into divination. He's stepping into witchcraft. And he has two servants with him. Let me give you a secret, saints. Hear me, hear me, hear me. You don't understand. When people are missing God, they tend to gather your attention. And you follow in the direction of them not knowing that they're in error. You can't see. Because you look on the outside, you judge on the outside, you make decisions by what appear, okay, that look okay, okay that look okay, and, and, and you follow in witchcraft. You're following divination. You're following Satanism. You're fall Watch this. He's rebelling against God. And in the midst of him rebelling against God, he's taking two servants. Wait. Two servants are following him in danger and they don't know. Oh, my. Saints, Balaam is on his way to disaster. He's on his way to judgment. He's on his way because watch, he was right in the morning, but now he's wrong in the evening. Saints, there are some people that they were, when God was speaking for, on their behalf, they was mourning. But now, they're in the saddling of the ass. Now, they're in the princes of Moab. They done switched. Now watch. When you get to the, when you get to the text, look what it say. Watch this here. In verse 22, he takes two servants with him. Now saints, let me just say this. Let me just say this. I keep saying this to JHM. If God connected you to Prophet Joshua Holmes, don't look for Prophet Joshua Holmes and nobody else. Because if they ever decide to fail God and miss God, What's going to happen to you is you're going to flee from Prophet Joshua Holmes when you don't see that this is their personal decision. God is not connecting you to everybody around a man of God. He's connecting you to the man of God. When the man of God comes, you can jump on everybody's bandwagon, but God ain't sending you there. They're not feeding you. God is using the prophet to feed you. As long as you stay where you're being fed, you can't be deceived. If you make other idols and make other people credibility to stick for prophet Joshua Holmes, then you want to fall into a trap. Because why? If they decide they don't want to follow God, if they decide they don't want to listen to Jesus, you're going to fall right in the trap with them. The Bible said, he took two servants with him. 
Now, they don't know that they're, going, they're being misled. They don't know that they're being led as sheep to the slaughter. They don't know. He's in rebellion. Leading them. It's, it's, a, it's a big mistake. No, if God connect me to Dr. Mike Murdoch, I'm not going to go to nobody around Dr. Mike Murdoch to find out who Dr. Mike Murdoch. No, I'm going to stick with Dr. Mike Murdoch. And if I ever see you mess up, it ain't going to mess me up, Dr. Mike Murdoch. You're still with me. I, I'm still for you. I'm still on your side. It don't matter what I see from them. But if I follow them, if I see them waver, I'm going to waver with them because I've made them an idol when God connected me to Dr. Mike Murdoch. No, saints, I'm telling you stuff that I know. Because, saints, you got to understand, when God connects you to a person, stay connected to a person. Stop trying to get connected to everybody else. Because when they wake up one day and say, listen, I don't want to follow the Lord. I, I don't I want I don't want to obey God concerning this. I don't. Now, now, because you linked yourself to them. Now, that same spirit is coming off on you. Why? Because the Bible said bad company corrupts good character. So your character can be good, but because your company is bad, it's corrupting your good character. What's going on? You was in a place of surrender and loyalty and honor, but because you're seeing something else, now you're moving in the same vein. That's the danger. That's the danger. That's the danger. Peter did not follow Judas. He followed Jesus. When Judas fell, Peter stayed. Why? If he would have followed Judas, when Judas did what he did, he would have followed Judas and what Judas did. But because he was following Jesus, because he knew the father connected him to Jesus. So even when Judas fell, Peter, uh, Elisha followed Elijah. So when the sons of the prophet began to clown around, even though they had some type of connection to prophet Elijah, because there's a reason why they were called the sons of the prophet. They were sons of Elijah on another plane. So even though these sons were telling him and clowning at him, he said, no, I'm going to follow the man of God. Now, if he was following them, when they begin to clown, he would have followed them and missed the double portion. Listen, the secret is where Jesus connects you. Stay connected to where he connected you. He not connecting you to a manifold group of people. He connecting you to one feeder, one leader, one person, one Jesus. One anointed one, one Christ, one, one person that's enveloped with the anointed one and his anointing. Jesus possessed, Jesus full, Jesus filled. And when he connect you there, you don't need another voice of recommendation. You don't need another voice of friendship. You don't need another voice of, 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 of counsel. You already have the connection that you need. When you link up with other people, they're not so strong. There's a reason why God called a man to be a leader. Why? Because saints, you got to understand, when, when God is dealing with a man to be a leader, there's a reason why he's a leader. Because he has a certain level of God inside of him that is not shady. It's not double-minded. It's not something one day and something the next day. There's a consistency. There's a reason why God calls a man to be a leader because he's in a place where Jesus has taken him over. He don't have a problem with double-mindedness. He don't have a problem with bipolarism. He don't have a problem with one day being Jesus filled and the next day being flesh filled. No, it's a consistency and a flow. So what God does is he anoints the man to be a leader. Why? Because 
because he's saying you are qualified for people to hear me through you and I want them connected to you. Now, if you are ignorant, you're trying to connect with everybody around that one and then when they fall, you fall right with them. Why? Because we in the last days. You think everybody that's up there jumping around saying hallelujah going to make it? And people that say hallelujah, the, 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 the first one going to fall, the way going to be falling down right there. You, you, think, you think everybody up there shouting hallelujah, you think they're going to make it? Saints, you got to understand, one third of those angels was praising God yesterday and the next day they was kicked out of heaven. Oh my God. No, no, no. Saints, you don't understand. I said those one third of angels, they was praising God one moment and they was on the earth the next moment. They got kicked out. How one minute they was thanking God, giving glory to God, giving honor to God, saying, Lord, you're so awesome. Lord, you're so amazing. Lord, you're so beautiful. Lord, you're so blessed. Lord, you're so great. You do miracles so great. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. And the next minute they're dumped. Ah. It sounds just like ministry. It, sound, it sounds just like ministry. People change. God does it. People do. So when people change, when you done put your trust in the wrong person that God ain't even connect you to, they not preaching to you. They not feeding you. They not imparting nothing to you. They not making you grow. They not revealing God to you. There's nothing. And you pitch your whole, you know, you done shifted your focus and God say, hey, I didn't pitch you there. I pitch you here. You done made something that I didn't intend. I said, Prophet Joshua, Hall, you all the way over here talking about, oh, this person with Prophet Joshua. Hall. No. Then you find yourself in a place. You directing your attention every other way and God saying, what? I intended to connect you to the prophet and you are all over the place. You are all over the place and you ain't got no discernment. You don't even know. You, you don't even know. You don't even know nothing. Because if you was in prayer, if you was in the secret place, you would know Jesus or what he got to say. You don't know nothing because you're not prophetic yet. Listen, watch this here. A lot of times people are around a prophet and they're not prophetic. Why? Because you ain't learning. You ain't learning. you just going by what you see. You're still in the natural realm. Get in the spirit, saints. That's the problem with our generation. It's fleshly. It looks on the outside. There's no spiritual person. There's not people that's in the spirit. They're only in the natural. Oh, you look good, prophet. Oh, you're telling me on the outside, but how do the spirit look? How does the relationship and the humility and the submission and the obedience and the worship and the consistency, how does it look before God? Some of y'all, you you know, you 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 gonna live your whole life being deceived. You know why? Because you you look on the outside to decide who's righteous. You look on the outside. I know. I know. I've been there. Those of y'all know my story. I've been there where people say, "Oh, well, somebody look innocent. Oh, so they can't." No, I don't think that they're wrong. What? Oh, so innocence got to look. Innocence ain't got no look. Solomon was about to give the wrong hope the child. Because the hope knew how to look innocent. It's in your Bible. <clears throat> it was in your Bible. Remember that hole? The Bible said it was two holes. One hole slept on her baby. And the other hole had her baby. The hole that slept on her baby went to Solomon and said, this is my baby. Solomon was confused. Why? Because the hoe looked innocent. The hoe looked like she was really the mother of the child. God had to tell Solomon, listen, say you're going to cut the baby in two. When he said, I'm going to cut the baby in two, 
the hoe that was lying, she was happy. And the hoe that was really telling the truth, she said, no, don't cut the child. Just let the child live. I, I, I don't even, listen, if, if you gonna kill the child, I love my baby. Just kill, just let her stay and, and I just let her go. That's how he understood. If he was not prophetic, the lion hole would have deceived him from the true hole. Now, saints, what does this tell you? If you are a fleshly person, you're not going to discern a liar. If you are fle if, if you somebody that just look on the outside, you're not going to discern the disloyal. Now, especially not in our generation. If, if, if you are someone that's always looking on the outside, you're not observing the inside, you're not following the spirit of God, you're not listening intently, you're going to miss. Why? Because your eyes are looking on the outside. You're still in the flesh. You operate in the natural. You're not going to be victorious in that realm. As a matter of fact, you're going to be someone that's always making wrong decisions because God is not on the outside. He's dealing with the inside. And he's dealing with spiritual matters that only people that's in the secret place are going to be able to see from God's point of view. Saints, I, I see people all the time. Listen, the, 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 the people, you see people all the time. I said, I hear people say, oh, that person, they look so humble. I, I have wondered, how could people say people look humble? How do you look humble? I've heard people say, oh, this man, he's so quiet. He's such a humble man. He's so quiet. Being quiet don't make you humble. Most people that's quiet be the murderers. Them the one that chop your foot off. Kunta. You turn into Kunta. Kunta Kente. The Kunta. Then you done change your name because they done chop your foot off. Huh? You done chop your foot off. You done turn into Kunta. Quiet. But thinking. Thoughts. That are dangerous. You don't judge somebody by their quietness. Then you see someone talkative, you say, oh, they proud. No, most times they be humble. That's why they got something to say. Sometimes God downloads stuff into them because they, 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 they humble. Most quiet people are dangerous. You see them quiet, you don't know what they're thinking. Yeah. Some quiet people, you, you see them quiet, you don't know that they be thinking, listen, I'm going to piss something in a drink. You, you don't even know. Why? Because they're quiet. They contemplate it. You don't know. People judge on the outside. We live in a generation where they look on the outside and they decide. You don't know who people are. You don't. Jesus got to reveal it to you. And watch this. There are some people that Jesus haven't revealed to you because they're not even a part of your connection. It's you trying to latch on to them. Jesus. There's some stuff right there. Hold on. I, I said there's some people that Jesus haven't even revealed to you because they're not even part of your equation. You trying to make them a part of your equation. God will always show you your divine connection and that's it. He ain't trying to show you everybody else. You trying to show, you trying to find out everybody else because you, you know it. Since you know, Jesus had many people that work in his ministry, but he was, he was the one in the ministry that was ministering. It was him. Why? Because the Father anointed him. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Notice that Jesus didn't pick the assignment on Mary. He didn't pick the assignment on Peter. He didn't pick the assignment on John the Baptist. He came and he preached, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus did the assignment of the Father. Why? Because his vessel was pure. His vessel was righteous. His vessel was clean. Prophetic level 14. A double purity. 
the work of God being finished in you, double. You know, so many people are talking about, you know, God is working on me. Well, Dad, God takes forever though, huh? If God working on you, you got to get it together, sister. You got to get it together, brother. Like, blessed be God. Like, how long he going to work on you? Like, dag on it? Like, it, it should have been done yesterday. Like, last year it should have been done. Like, my God, you acting like God don't know what he doing. Since you have met somebody five years later, it's still acting crazy. I said, listen, God working on me. God, God probably ain't working on you. You probably done found somebody else, listen, to just get, on, get, get the job done. You know that car that's raggedy that you keep trying to fix and keep breaking down? Don't you want a new car? You think God won't keep on working with somebody that keep on breaking down? Oh, Jesus. You hear what I said? Even if you got a car that keep on breaking down, you want a new car. You, you think that God don't be able to, ah, you keep on breaking down every Ah, I done fix you. You done broke down again. Oh, I done fix you. Oh, you done broke down. Ah, I done fix Oh, you broke down again. Five years later. Oh, I done fix you. You broke down. Again. Listen, sometimes you keep breaking down because you just a broke. With your broke side, you just, you just. You think God going to stay right there and just keep on repair, repair, repair? Says you. God just going to look for a new vehicle that he can drive without no interruption. See, saints, a lot of people that's going to carry the anointing are replacement people. Why? Because somebody... God was trying to drive in their car and they wouldn't let God steer the wheel. So God, like, listen, I, ain't, I, I can't go nowhere. I'm trying, I'm trying, listen, I'm trying, I'm trying to get this done. Listen, let me go over here. Saints, you got to understand scripture to full totality. The Bible said Jesus would never leave us nor forsake us. Then in the other text, he said, if you look warm, I speak you out my mouth. So saints, there is a disconnection in God. That's why Hebrews chapter 12, I believe is verse 28. It said, therefore, receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us have grace that we may serve God acceptably with fear and trembling. I think that's Hebrews chapter uh, 12, verse 28. It said, having received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us have grace. Let us have grace. Why I say let us have grace? Let us move let us have the ability of God in our personality, in our mentality, in our functionality. Let us have the ability. Let us have grace. So what's going on? The grace is showing you how to function. The grace is giving you a humility towards God. The grace is causing you to not miss him. Now, saints, I want you to see this. Now, we're dealing with Prophet Balaam. Watch this here. Verse 23. The Bible said, The ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. The ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. And his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way into the field. Balaam smote the ass and turned her into the way. I want you to see this. Stop. Watch this here. This is a revelation. The ass is really protecting Balaam from judgment. The ass is protecting Balaam from calamity from God, from judgment hitting him, from disaster hitting him. And watch, Balaam is fighting. A donkey that's delivering him. Listen, saints, I want you to catch this. 
sometimes you can become guilty of fighting someone that is actually saving you from calamity. Imagine that. That's right, daughter. The stupid ass protected bed. Watch. He's fighting. He's fighting his help. And he thinks that he's right. No, no. Balaam thinks that he's prophetic enough to know, listen, you wrong. Balaam is fighting his hell. His help is in the donkey. The donkey is taking him away from the wrong path and he's fighting the donkey. I want you to see this. When people make up in their mind to be disobedient, you become their enemy. It don't matter how pure you are. When people make up in their mind, that they're going to accomplish something that God don't want. If you try to turn them away, they're going to start fighting you. You ever wonder why family don't receive you when you start living right? And all because now you have become an enemy. You're in another kingdom. Watch this, saints. God is having mercy on this donkey. This donkey is in the spirit realm now. And Balaam is in the satanic realm. Balak is in the satanic realm. The donkey is in the spirit realm. And watch, the donkey now has authority that's greater than Balaam. Why? Because Balaam done switch. He done left his authority into the satanic realm. And now the donkey done left the satanic realm into the spirit realm. Because foolishness is a realm of the satanic. It's not God's realm. So, so there's a switching going on. Balaam is in the satanic. The donkey is in the prophetic. Watch this. The Bible said in verse 24 that now he's beating the donkey. When you are prophetic, rebellious people will beat you. Why? Because now the spirit realm. You're carrying an authority to help them. And Satan doesn't want them to see it. He wants them to be healed. He wants them to be destroyed. Now watch this here. Verse 25. Oh, verse 24. It said, The angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards. A wall being on this side and a wall on this side. So saints, I want you to see this. There's a wall on this side. There's a wall on this side. And the angel is standing right between. The wall is here. The wall is here. The angel is between. Wall here. Wall here. Angel here. Watch this, saints. This is an angelic zone. Why is there a wall on both sides of the angel? Because when you don't go in the path of the Lord, there's walls that are over your life. When you don't yield to the Holy Spirit, there's walls, there's invisible walls that you can't see that are built up on your finances, walls on your desire to be married, walls on your healing, walls on your prayer life, walls on your focus, walls on your worship, walls. Now watch this. And the Bible said in verse 24, there was a wall on each side. And notice the Bible said the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards. You know, vineyards is really vine yard. Somebody write me that word vineyard. Somebody write me that word vineyard. Let me show you something. The 
Bible said the angel stood in the vine yard. His vine yard. Jesus is the vine and this is his yard. So saints, this angel is in the zone of Jesus. He stood in the way of the vineyard. Now watch this here, saints. Verse 25. When the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall and he smote her again. Watch this in verse 26. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place. Remember what the Bible said? Straight and narrow is the way that leads to life. How many of y'all remember that text? Look at verse 26. The Bible said the angel of the Lord went further and stood in the narrow place. So the angel is located in the straight and narrow path that only a few find. Watch. And watch where was there was no way either to the right hand or to the left. This is an angelic zone. Now verse 27, look what it says. The ass saw the angel of the Lord and she fell down under Balaam. I want you to see this. Balaam was prophetic, but now he's so proud that angels are around him and he still won't change. Angels are the donkey bows down to the angel, but he's so proud now that he won't do it. But he was, prof but now he's Verse 27, she fell down, the donkey falls down underneath Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. Do you know what the staff represent? Psalm 23 said, thy rod and, and thy staff shall comfort me. Do you know what the staff represent? The staff represent the Holy Spirit. Remember, Moses had the staff, saints. Balaam is so deep in witchcraft that now he's trying to use the Holy Spirit as his weapon against the donkey that been sent to help him. Spiritually. I ain't even trying to preach this. God just giving me this message. strikes the donkey with the staff. Man. Look at verse 26. This is some deep stuff. Y'all catching me up in here? <clears throat> verse 28. Then the Lord opened up the mouth of the ass. Wow. Watch. God is so pissed off that now God is like, listen. I'm not going to let this ass stay right here. <laughs> I'm going to go over here while. I'm going to open up this ass mouth. You know what I'm saying? Now watch this here. <laughs> watch this here. <laughs> watch this here. Look. What? 
Okay. <clears throat> Look what it says. <clears throat> we in verse 20. <laughs> we in verse. We in verse 28. And the Lord opened up the mouth of the ass. And she said unto Balaam. What have I done unto thee? Wow. This donkey knows that is innocent. It asks him, What have I done unto thee? Watch this here. That thou hast smitten me these three times. And that was a that was a poor ass, you know what I'm saying? done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times. Verse 29, Balaam said unto the ass, <laughs> because thou hast mocked me, I would there if there was a sword in my hand, I would kill thee. Oh my God. Now watch this, saints. You got to catch this. The donkey is now sent to deliver Balaam. Balaam is so angry. Now he's turned into hatred to the degree now he wants to kill his deliverance. Now the donkey is sent to deliver him. He's trying to kill. He said, listen, if I had a sword in my hand, I would have killed you. What he was saying, don't think because I hit you one time, that was enough. No, if I had a sword in my hand, I would have, I, I, I would take you out right now. Watch this. Verse 29. Balaam said, because thou hast mocked me. Listen. Balaam thought that the donkey was mocking him, but really the, the donkey was protecting him. Saints, if you look at the text, Balaam is so deep in witchcraft, he can't see that the donkey is protecting him, not mocking him. He's saying that the donkey is mocking him. The donkey, you you against me, donkey. You you mad at me, donkey. You messing up my thing. You against me. You trying to stop this. You not with me. I, you against me, donkey. And the donkey is sent to help him from being slayed by the angel that the donkey is seeing in the spirit realm that been sent against him because one minute he was prophetic then he stepped into foolishness. Now he led away by demons, the princes of Moab. <clears throat> Look at verse 30. And the ass said unto the donkey, Am I not thine ass? It's a powerful statement. I'm not that ass. Huh? And I just added in the ha. No, the ha was in there. I just added on there. Now the rest was in there. But I just added on there. <laughs> Hold on, wait. Hold on, let's get to this thing. Come on. Let's stop. stop. Huh? Uh, no, I just put the ha in there. The ha was in there. Now watch this here. Hold on. Watch this here. No, we in verse 30. Wait. Ha. Wait. 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 Verse 30. Huh? Wait. No, I just put that in there. It was just, am I not the ass? I put the hot in there. That was it. That's it. Wait. I'm, am I not the ass? Now watch this. That just had to fix that. Let's go back to the text. We in verse 30. And the ass said unto Balaam, am I not the ass upon which thou hast ridden? 
<laughs> now watch this now. <clears throat> this is some funny stuff. Now, watch this, saints. The ass is telling him. <laughs> <laughs> the ass said, Am I not the ass that you've been riding? <laughs> and I'm fine. <laughs> Watch yourself. Hold on, wait. I'm saying King James. <clears throat> now watch this here. He said, Am I not the ass that you've been riding ever since day one? Until this day? So there was a loyalty up in here. The ass was like, listen, I, I listen. <laughs> Am I not the one? Huh? Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. You know what I'm saying? I just died of the time. Okay, now watch it, verse 30. Was I ever evil to you? And he said, no. Verse 31. The Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with the sword. In his hand. And the Bible said he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Verse 32. And the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out against you because your way is perverse before me. Since you see that? This is the angel of the Lord speaking. He said, Your way is perverse before me. Says, watch this here. Then it said, look at, look at this, saints. This is so strong. Watch this. In verse 33, it said, The ass saw me and turned from me three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely I would have killed you and saved her. Saints, this is powerful. Look at this, verse 33. He said, the ass saw me. She turned away from me three times. Because if she did not do that, I would have killed you and spared her. Well, the angel was saying, I would have took you out and let her live. Saints, you got to be careful and stop fighting the prophet that's sent to deliver you. Notice that the only reason why this, this donkey was qualified to speak was because it became a seer. This donkey was not qualified to open up his mouth until it became a seer. When it began to see the angel, then it had the authority to speak into Balaam's life and tell him, hey, Balaam was fighting his deliverance. Why? Because he wasn't in the angelic zone. He wasn't obedient to the spirit. He was now perverse in his ways. He was following his own path. The angelic zones of your life is connected to the prophet of God. In the spirit, there are angels 
that move stronger with those that are connected to a prophet rather than those that are just saved. Why? Because the prophet's reward is a greater dimension. Remember, the Bible said in uh, Hebrews, it said that he's a reward of they that diligently seek him. But then if you read the text in, 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 in Matthew chapter 10, he said that if you receive a prophet, you'll receive the prophet's reward. So watch this. God has a reward for you diligently seeking him. This is what happens to a believer. But the prophet's reward is an added on reward to the prophetic believer. So you have God's reward. You have the prophet's reward. The prophet's reward is a added on grace, is an added on prosperity, is an added on financial blessing, is an added on uh, mantle, is an added on focus, is an added on protection, is an added on mantle, is an added on Victory is an added on justice, an added on peace, an added on joy, an added on health, an added on encounter with God, an added on supernatural ministry is added. Prophetic level 14. level 14 doubling the grace the saints the angelic zones are so sensitive to your fruit notice that the angel said your way is perverse before me. So the angel was studying Balaam. It was Balaam's angel. The angel was studying him. And the angel was now fighting against him because Balaam was in a place. You want to stay low before the Lord. you walk in love, you can never miss. If you stay low and humble, you can never miss. So that the angelic zone can be in a place, not where it's fighting you, but fighting for you. Holy Are you Lord God? Almighty Oh, yes, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, you are holy, oh, yes, holy, are you Lord God? Your holy, 
Special anointing resting upon your life. Special anointing resting upon your life. Special anointing resting upon your life. Special anointing. On today, dominate. You learn to control you. God will give you authority to control atmospheres. When God gives you the authority to control atmospheres, then you can control the devil. But just focus. Learn to control you. You learn to walk self-control is a fruit of the spirit. You be excellent. No matter what. No matter what. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you by the power of the Holy Ghost that you'll experience supernatural victory, protection, glory and power in the mighty name of Jesus I pray for you I pray for you right now those of you all may you have victory at your workplace may you have victory in your schedule victory in all that you set your hands to in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare victory. Everywhere your feet try, victory. May it increase for you. May you see it. May you walk in it. May victory overtake you in every single way. There's angels all around me. Angels all around me. There's angels all around me. Oh, angels all around. There's angels all around me. Angels all around. There's angels. 
angels, oh, angels, angels, oh, angels, there's angels, angels, bless you, saints. Angels all around me, oh, angels all around me. There's angels, oh, angels. Angels, oh, yes, yes, angels. There's angels all around you. There's angels all around. There's angels all around you. Oh, yes. Angels all around. Angels. Oh, yes, yes. Angels. Angels, oh yes, yes, angels. There's angels all around you, oh, angels all around. There's angels. Angels, oh, angels, ooh, ooh, oh, yeah. Angels, oh yes, angels. There's angels all around me, oh, angels all around. There's angels all around me. Angels, oh yes, yes, angels, oh, Jesus, oh yes, our glorious, oh, created us. Your temple, oh, hard as living stones, where you're enthroned, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, as you roll. From death in power, rise within our worship, oh, rise 
Let the hand that saw you raise Clothe us in your glory Oh yes Draw us by your grace Oh, the glory. 